Greetings students. In this video, we will review how to complete math gridding questions on the SHSAT. The math section includes five gridding questions for which students must solve computational questions and provide the correct numerical answer rather than selecting the answer from multiple choice options. Consider these questions your short response questions. The grid for each question is made up of five columns as you can see in the images here below. When you record your answer in the grid, begin all the way to the left. For each gridding question, question, write your answer in the box at the top of the grid first. So for this example here, the student wrote the number five, and then they also bubbled in the number five here at the bottom. Print only one number or decimal symbol in each box. Use the decimal symbol if your response includes a decimal point. Fill in the circle under the box that matches the number or symbol that you wrote. Keep in mind, there are no fractions on the grid in section of the exam. The number can be negative, in which case you will start your answer in the first box right here. Here. If the number is positive, you're going to start in the second box, the white box right here. Remember to write it in and bubble it in. And over here to the right gives you a perfect example of how you would enter a decimal. The number 3.2 is going to be written with the three in the white box, the decimal point in the gray box, and two in the white box. You're gonna bubble in the three down here, bubble in the decimal point, and bubble in the two. It's okay to leave this box blank because you didn't need it and we leave this box blank because the number was positive and not negative. The first column on the left of the grid is only for recording a negative sign, as we discussed. So take a look at example C. If the answer is negative, you will write in the negative at the top and bubble it in right here. If your answer is positive, leave the first column blank and begin recording your answer in the second column. When your answer includes a decimal, make sure to fill in the circles that match all parts of your answer. For example, if your answer is 0.78, Fill in the circles under zero, the decimal point, the seven, and the eight. We start off with the white box right here, and we write the zero, the decimal point, the seven, and the eight, and then we're going to have four bubbles filled in. This is example D here. Note that an answer displaying 0.78 will also be accepted as correct, like in example E. Some students like to write the zero right before the decimal point, and some students prefer to omit it. The SHSAT will regard both of these answers as correct. Do not leave a box blank in the middle of an answer. If there is a blank in the middle of your answer, it will be scored as incorrect. For example, if your answer is 308, example F is the acceptable way to grid in your response. In example G, where the student left this box blank, it would be considered incorrect. Since there is a space between the three and the eight rather than zero, this is an unacceptable way to grid in your response and will be scored as incorrect. Do not fill in a circle under an unused box, as in example H. The answer recorded in example H will be scored as 3,080 because the student bubbled in the zero right here, even though the intended response is 308. So the bubbled in responses is what's going to be coded into the system. So be very careful to only bubble in that which you've written here at the top. Here are a few important notes about gridding questions. For your answer to be scored, the circles in the grid must be filled in. If you write an answer in the boxes but do not fill in the circles in the grid, your answer will be scored as incorrect. If your answer written in the boxes do not match how you filled in the circles, your score will be based on how you have filled in the circles, like in example H. If there is more than one circle filled in for a column, your answer will be scored as incorrect. A complete numerical response that is correct will be scored as correct, even if you accidentally begin recording in the wrong column. If you accidentally add a decimal point with no additional values or zeros, after a whole number, your answer will be scored as that whole number. For example, if your answer is five, as in example A, an answer that is filled in as five point or 5.0 will be considered an answer of five in scoring. So that would still be correct. Make sure you pay close attention to how you answer the grid in questions and try practicing this at home for your next diagnostic exam. If you learned something from this video, please go ahead and like, comment, share, and subscribe, and go ahead and let me know what more you'd like to see as you prepare for your upcoming exam. See you in the next video.